Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fitch, and welcome back to episode 3 of my Yuan Shu campaign. In the last episode, we defeated Lu Bu, however, he did not go down without fighting. He killed over 1,500 men on my side of the field. It was a brutal battle, but we did defeat him and send him packing. That did actually allow us to secure his weapon as well. After beating him, we gained his weapon, so we're going to have to go ahead and stick that on someone during this episode, and hopefully they'll be become the next Lu Bu, I don't know, because his weapon is really, really good. It makes the character, I think, unbreakable and gives such a huge stat increase to instinct as well. So uh, hopefully this will basically just guarantee us a legendary character. We also, uh, you know, took out Lu Biao as well, so his vassals are in disarray and hopefully we will seize the opportunity. As well as that, we also coalitioned with Sun Jin as well. So we've got a pretty powerful block. If I can go ahead and claim all of this, territory we can really push in against Sao Sao and other people um, and maybe even go and fight my brother as well or march on the capital kind of our possibilities are endless really right now I want to quickly check yeah we do actually have an open trade agreement but I don't think anyone is in uh, yeah we're not we're not really touching anyone at the moment we've got enemies all around us and then we've got the Han Empire stuff so I don't think we can actually trade with Han Empire either um Wait, no, that's Dong Ming asking me to become his vassal. Yeah, <laughs> just, just triple checking, but I remember that from last episode. We're going to have to sort out our public order issues as well. We have kind of scattered throughout the empire. And I think what I might do is I might get rid of this rural office. I mean, really, it doesn't give me much for what it does. However, I did want to check something really quickly. Um, I, I want to get the public order bonus down here. And this does allow me to do it because I have the tech tax, because uh, I have the tax office. So I might go ahead and grab this and then get rid of the building because a plus two public order bonus is just really, really good. So that's what we're going to be looking to get probably in two turns. For now, though, it's just building up our armies and preparing to march south once again. Talking of public order, we just gone ahead and got this festival, which is going to boost public order for 10 turns. That's perfect. That should hopefully sort out our entire year. We're getting plus seven in every single province. That's going to be huge, especially in a province like this, which is so close to actually rebelling. I think this army might actually have to head north and deal with that um i want to actually also look can i build up another character here we can but i think what i want to do is i want to save up my legitimacy because we're so close to hitting the next rank which will give me 50 prestige when we do get acknowledged which should be enough to go ahead and get second marquee right so that's what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of wait for that to go up and then we'll probably spend it to recruit a new character and i'll probably get a uh a vanguard is it vanguards um, I'll probably get a Vanguard or a Champion, so the Reds or the Greens, because they can wield Lu Bu's weapon, and obviously we want him to have that. Next turn, though, we're probably going to start marching down to take these cattle farms, and a level 6 city here as well. Holy crap. Yeah, we're going to march down south and start claiming this territory, um, and hopefully Sun Jin is going to help out as well. However, Cao Cao is pushing into his territory, so he needs to be very, very careful. Um, I don't know, I think Sun Jin is all the way in the south fighting Han Empire provinces, yeah, so he needs to come back. Not Sun Jin, actually, yes, Sun C. But Sun Jin is still alive, yeah. So I don't know where Sun Jin is, but his son is still alive going around. Oh, he's down here. Yeah, I've noticed this quite a lot in my playthroughs, that the, uh, the AI Sun Jin always gets big, because there's just so much Han Empire territory here, so they just explode into it. Um, and it, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I guess it's just kind of like a DLC Lords will be put here eventually. Um, and honestly, I don't think it really affects the game too much um, because you've got so much like you know, right now. He can't really stay down here killing Han Empire because he's fighting Sao Sao now. So, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting to say the least. I don't think it really affects the game too much, but um, it, it, I, I would like to see a few more lords scattered in here just to kind of space it up a little bit more, if if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, let's continue on and push forward. Okay, so let's pick up that reform that we wanted, the uh, the, the banditry one, because just give plus two public order to every single province. That's great. The next one isn't too good, and I wouldn't mind picking up the other public order ones, like this one right here. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to delete that tax building and probably build something else here, um, whether it is more food or something. I'm not actually too sure what else I want to stick here. But I think the minus eight public order, it's just unnecessary um, for the 110 gold from the peasantry. I don't know. Obviously, you can create big bonuses. So what I could do is maybe get rid of this garrison bonus and then build, uh, what is it? The government support, is it? 
Is it this one? Yeah, then I could build a government support and get this one, which gives me 100% income from peasantry, which would then make this, instead of uh, 8 public order for 110 income, it would obviously be 220, um, and so on, obviously, the higher ranks as well. It'd be pretty, pretty good at the end of the day, but... I think we're just going to demolish this and build something else there. Um, and we're also going to upgrade our capital as well to a level 5. Get that up and running. And our army is going to start moving down south. Now, unfortunately, there is no road. I guess the, road, the quickest road is going to be through here, right? What is quicker? So four turns or four turns. Um, we'll force march. Even though we won't replenish, I'm going to force march to go ahead and cut down this journey. And I guess we'll just go this... I guess we'll go this way. Could we spend more time in friendly territory, meaning we don't lose supplies as quickly? Yeah, let's follow the road through the mountain. Um, and the good thing is, everywhere is really happy now, even without the armies here. Mainly down to the events, but the events, yeah, the events should be really helping in a place like this, yeah. And our capital is plus nine a turn, which is great. And all we need is our legitimacy to go up, which I think it is next turn, or in, no, in two turns' time, it will go up, and then we will lose this minus two public order. And then get plus three public order. So that should be all good when that starts firing. Perfect. And we have a lot of money building up. So, you know, that's, that's perfect. And if we can get some trade with some people, that would be great as well. So for now, we will just be hanging out and trying to move down and secure ourselves some territory. Now, I expect them to have some decent soldiers down here to the south, if, if I'm honest. So we might have to run into some big battles. Okay, it's time to move in on this province. We probably just an easy auto resolve right now. No need to fall. Whoa, there's a reinforcement army, I think. No? Okay, well, I don't know. This was like said it was going to be really in our favor, but I guess not as we dive into the battle. Well, I'm going to be starving them out for now. If they want to come out and fight me, then they're more than welcome to. Because an interesting thing in Free Kingdoms is that you take attrition immediately when you garrison these minor settlements. Because I guess the idea behind that is that they're not meant to house an army, right? They're kind of there just to, to allow you to further your campaign. And if you want to defend these settlements, you have to go ahead and sit out outside of them with your army because these settlements are meant for that whereas cities themselves you don't take attrition immediately it's until the reserves go down and run out i mean for example this place has 55 reserves you'll be taking it'll be take a long time for you to start taking attrition with 55 reserves our capital as well as 35 so you can see the big difference right there um so it's an interesting mechanic and i think it's it'll be really good to do like stuff like this in multiplayer when you're doing head-to-heads and stuff because it's a real big decision. Oh, well, I want to garrison this province, but if I do, I'm going to start taking attrition, and then you'll have the upper hand. So it's probably better for me to garrison, like, these bridges and stop you from coming in. So I don't know. I thought that was quite interesting. At first, I was a bit like, why the hell is it like this? But the more I played with it, the more I kind of enjoyed it. And it seems like Kong Rong is uh, heading off on a, a, a crusade somewhere. I don't know where he's going through the uh, Great Wall as well. Um, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. So for now, we're just waiting for our buildings to upgrade. We've got, um, I'm building a state workshop over here as well to hopefully get some more industry because we're making a ton of industry from this tool depot, uh, an absolute buttload. So that's great. And our public order is really starting to come into its own right now, which is perfect. So I'm um, probably actually have to go, go ahead and garrison this army in the north just to help the public order go up a little bit more. Um, because, yeah, the public order here is absolutely abysmal. Minus 70. That's, like, the worst I've ever seen it. So, yeah, sorting that out is very important. Sal Sal wants to buy the Stone Archer for a 1,000. Sure. Now, it's not great because he is at war with, obviously, my coalition member. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. I'm sure it's fine. And they're going to sally out, and we're obviously going to be fighting this one. Um, yeah, so we're going to be diving into this battle. Hopefully, it will go fine with our cavalry and stuff. Let's see what we can get done. Man, I am really, really lucky that they attacked me, because if you can see, look at this hill. If I was to attack them on this province, they would have to have gone up this massive hill. I'm going to just dive forward and stick myself in these rice fields and try and force them, like engage them as they come across the river. I think that's going to be my best bet. As well as that, we have actually got access to... Um, oh, you can actually go across these ones, but not these ones? Oh, you can go across all of them. Okay. Well, we'll just use the river as like a defense. Um, or maybe this, we'll just use this house as like a defense. Yeah, that would be fine. Um, yeah, so... If I was to attack them, it would have been brutal going up that hill. But also, I now have access to some shield wall formations, which is really, really cool. Um, I'll make sure to stick my dudes up into, into shield wall when we do get up and I'll... Obviously, you have to use this cavalry quite effectively. As I think they have like 5,000 men in this battle. So, 
It's going to be kind of crazy, but obviously they, they pushed on me, so we're going to try and hit them as they come across the river. I think for now, though, they are just waiting for their reinforcements, so I guess, I, I mean, I don't really want to cross this river, so I'll just wait it out for them in my shield wall and hope for the best. Okay, here they come, all 5,000 of them. Yeah, they're looking very, very scary right now. Um, I accidentally missed up my formation a little bit, so now my archers are just reforming in along with the rest of my infantry. I also am in shield wall as well, which will be great. Hopefully my archers can give them a volley. They are all on fire at will. Yes, they are. Perfect. Yeah, return fire, boys. Return fire. And I guess I'm going to try and go for these uh, halberds. So let's bring them back a little bit uh, for now. Yeah, so the archer fire is going to be going off. Um, it seems like the AI really does love to send... Uh, stuff after your cavalry, um, but they've also left a lot of their archers undefended, so I guess that's good for me. Uh, let's push forward our infantry line now as well to engage them in the front line. Obviously, we want to be focusing down their missile line if we can help it, because missiles do do a crazy amount of damage to their front line. The cavalry does seem like it did manage. Oh, look at that charge! That saber cavalry absolutely annihilated them. That was an insane charge. We'll try and get some close ups of this charge, which is about to get kicked off. Um, but yeah, their missiles are deadly, and you can see the front line. I'm just about forming up right here. We'll throw in our lord as well. I don't think we can probably duel anyone. Can Janio? No, he can't duel anyone. Um, oh yeah, I can also put my shield block as well, so let's push that up a little bit. And then get these halberds in. Axes go in there. We are in shield wall with a, a handful of our men as well, so that's good. Um, how's the cavalry doing? The cavalry is just demolishing these guys. It's perfect. I mean, you guys are coming in as well. So you stay there and fight them. Uh, yeah, you stay there and just cut down these routing archers, or soon to be routing archers, and you continue to move on and, and just hit these big blobs. That would be perfect. And the rest of our missiles can stay on guard mode so I don't chase. And you guys also pop up your uh, perfect missile block. That's great. And you're in here as well, taking quite a lot of damage, but we'll debuff all of these guys with our Roar of the Beast, which is just such a strong ability. Um, you can basically make entire armies just rout from the field of battle for like 20 seconds, uh, which bides you a lot of time, like a serious amount of time to then go ahead and hit the enemy hard. Uh, you guys can actually break shield wall. We'll take a look at it really quickly. That's the shield wall right now. Uh, but we'll break it and we'll just... Oh, God, maybe I shouldn't have broke that because of this. <laughs> yeah, I probably broke that at the worst possible time. Um, but for now, the battle, I guess, is going pretty decent so far um, as we are breaking a lot of their archers. So I guess that was the most important thing to have happen. I'm causing havoc in the back lines, but my front lines are really starting to drop down and, and run out of manpower. I really need to try and get some cavalry over on this left-hand side. My halberds just can't really handle the pressure. I'm going to try and push some archers around this flank and help out. Or maybe I'll just try and focus down these halberds of all of my archers. Um, my general as well is actually getting a little bit low. So let's get him back on his horse and just pull him out of that fight. Um, I think our just pure amount of men will be enough to win the day, honestly. Um, and then we can maybe try and double team here. Let's get some cavalry back ASAP to try and hammer an anvil a few of these positions. And then maybe get him down there. Yeah, let's get our cavalry back. Our cavalry's already won the day back here. So let's bring it back and try and win the main fight in the uh, battlefield. Because we've routed all the archers, which has been big. Oh, we also just made a big breach here. That's perfect. Yeah, pursue them, please. I do not want them, uh, them surviving. Especially if the cavalry coming back in. That's great. And yeah, now their other generals are routing. I think the battle is going to be won now. We'll just select the rest of our missiles as they are just chilling here. The yeah, rest of the missiles, just maybe focus down this. We'll get some infantry around the flank. And just break off of what remains of this infantry. Another cavalry charge coming in. Even though it's on the halberds, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, it's another route. And then we've got this cavalry coming over. Perfect. Yeah, we're, we're destroying them. Um, and we do kind of want to try and kill as many as possible, just solely because we're going to still have to siege out the province, right? We're still sieging it, so whatever we don't kill this day, we'll have to kill later on in the battle. Um, and most of our archers are out of ammunition now, but it's fine. Just unload your, your quivers and whatever remains. Let's kill this lord really quickly. All of these guys are dying, which is perfect. And that's basically the battle won, right? Yeah, it's basically the battle won now. It's good. Holy crap. Look how much damage our cavalry did in that battle. Over 800 kills. That is crazy. Just slaughtering archers. I mean, the AI, I feel like, does do a better job at protecting their missiles. But they still just don't do a good enough job at doing it. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate because it kind of makes the battles play out quite similar when you're fighting the, K the, the AI. Like, you you make your line, they commit their infantry, you send your cavalry around the flanks and kill their missiles because they're running around with, like, infantry. It'd be nice if they, like, stuck infantry actually, like, on just, like, literally in, de in guard mode defending their missiles. Um, but, I mean, I guess it's better than previous Total Wars, so I'm not, it's not like a, a massive complaint I have. It's just something to note, you know. The AI 
AI's always been like this, so you know, it's like is what it is, I guess. But nice, that was, a, that was a good victory. Yes, our legitimacy has gone up. No, that's not us morale, thank God. I thought it was public order, because public order is kind of a problem right now. Um, it really is. I need to get this above, like, 100 ASAP. But yeah, nice, our legitimacy went up. So do we not... So do we not get the 50 prestige? Gain additional 41 prestige to reach this rank. But do we not have it, because we're in this now? We're acknowledged? So we have plus 50 prestige? That's what it says. Maybe it'll take a turn to, like, kick off. Yeah, because right now, yeah, it hasn't it hasn't fired yet, I guess, because we still got the minus two, so we're not we haven't got these bonuses quite yet, which is I guess fine with me. Um, so yeah, hopefully next turn will be second marquee. We'll just quickly take this province after the clean victory we had, and this is big because this is a cattle farm. This will hopefully start providing us with a load um, of food. Um, and we've defeated him as well, so now we're replenished, and then we'll move on the city. Uh, also, what is the, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's a hand town, right? Wait, what the hell is going on here? A general is unhappy, who? Probably you, right? And you, no, just, just him, okay. Can we do anything to make him happy? We've already given him a plus eight satisfaction. I guess we could promote him. Yeah, we've actually got so much satisfaction stuff on him. Um, I guess we're gonna have to promote him, right? I would love to, like, as soon as I, I'm actually wait a turn, and then stick him as my chancellor. We could also just promote him as well. Um, I'm actually going to be a little bit greedy and wait a turn. Hopefully he doesn't leave. I'm hoping he won't just leave immediately. Uh, he also leveled up as well. Nice. Um, that's probably why he's unhappy now. Um, I mean, it, does he get any bonuses as my chance? That's just commandery stuff. Uh, so I guess we'll just continue to make his, his retinue really good. Like, he's going to be the my shield on the battlefield. So we'll boost up his bravery stat and we'll get... Immune to fear and terror, so he's not going to rout from seeing, you know, people with one eye and Guan Yu and Lu Bu on the battlefield. His his infantry is going to hold, and he also uh, gains a charge negate as well, so he gets a bonus against enemy charges, which is good because he's going to be holding the front line constantly. So let's end the turn. Hopefully he doesn't leave, and then next turn when we hit second marquee, we can go ahead and... Um, oh, getting friends of Kong Rong is not a bad idea, but we don't really have a lot of food to be giving away, so... You know, we did just get a livestock farm, but it, yeah, we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can make him our Chancellor when we hit second marquee, which we should do now. There we go, perfect, second marquee. That's awesome with the legitimacy. So I wonder what happens if we lose second marquee. Also, we have 10 grand sitting in the bank as well, so we should probably do something about that. And we get, yeah, we get a bunch of legitimacy now, that's good. That's really good. Um, and also, he's a bit more satisfied as well. But, I mean, we'll probably make him our... Yeah, because he's just super unhappy. So, we'll probably make him our Chancellor now, yeah. So let's just do that. That'll make him really happy. And he's good to have as a Chancellor anyway. And we also get a Administrator as well. Good. I'll probably stick an Administrator. I'll probably wait to put an Administrator in, honestly. Just because everyone else is kind of happy. So, there's no need to, to, to pay someone more money when we don't need it right now. But that should make him extremely happy, right? Yeah, 56, that's perfect. I mean, you're still fine. And obviously, that's me. So, that's all good. I mean, you're really happy as well. Yeah, you're nice and content. Why are you so content? Just promotions. Yeah, you're pretty content. So, that's good. Do we have a good follower to give you? Something we do want to do now, though, and we have access to is spies. Um, so, the question is, who do we spy on now? I mean, again, I don't want to spend this influence quite yet. So, the legitimacy is going to hold. But maybe we spy on Sal Sal. Maybe we try and spy on our brother. You know, we haven't discovered him yet. We, we still don't know about our brother, which is kind of funny. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the livestock has been taken. It's a level four livestock farm as well. That's really good. Four farm, income, and reserves as well. So this settlement does have reserves, though. I thought minor settlements didn't. Oh, that's just reserves for the entire region, right? Yeah, that's just reserves. I wonder what happens. I mean, I know for a fact that you do take attrition... But maybe if you hold the main city, you don't because of like a supply line or something. But anyway, we'll be waiting a couple of turns to replenish and we'll be marching on the city, killing the rest of our enemies, and then probably discovering Sao Sao, right? Because he probably has all of this territory here. Um, then, we'll, then we'll probably take on the he. We'll probably take on he Yi and the yellow turbans, um, and then I guess go for our, our brother as well. Oh, what happened here? The Han Empire took this back. I mean, come on, dudes, you need to like push forward and come and do something. I don't really know where you're off to. Just conquering whilst... I guess you are holding him back. No, he's taken this as well. So you must have lost this battle. He has so many armies, so it's actually crazy. 
But anyway, second Marquis is good. We'll do our spy stuff in, in a bit. Uh, we might as well just pay for this now, honestly. We have the cash to do it. Um, let's grab this up. We lose a little bit of legitimacy, but we get 10% income. So that'll give us an extra 70 gold a turn. Is that worth it? Do these, yeah, these take more legitimacy as well. But you end up getting 60%. That's amazing. That is really, really good. Oh, yeah, we also have an assignment as well, another one. Um, so I guess, yeah, I guess we'll boost up. We'll stick him and just get more money from peasantry. Why not? Whilst we're here. Um, and then what building do we want? I mean, a school is always nice. Something I do want to grab is this. I want to get a grain storage because it gives you a reform, right? I can't remember what reform it is, but I know it's really good. What is it? It's something good. We're going towards the next infantry as well. We'll get the next, we'll get the medium tier infantry. But from what I remember, you want to have a grain storage because it gives you, yeah, it gives you the next spearman or allows you to get halberds. Yeah, it allows you to get really good halberds. Um, so, I mean, yeah, sure, we can do that. It's our capital. It gives some happiness as well. So, um, and I kind of just need it more than anything else. Yeah, sure. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a waste, right? Because it's kind of a little bit of a waste, but nothing too crazy. Um, and we might as well just start upgrading provinces. Like, we, we don't really have the food, though, do we? We'll just pay for that 600 gold. And I guess we can upgrade this to get a bit more food. Sure, we'll just pay for that as well. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a lot of my money, but whatever. And then we'll do that as well. And that'll give us the extra reform. Um, we should have a huge capacity here as well then, uh, which is good. Yeah, yeah, cool. Cool, that's great. Nice. Oh, yeah, something I forgot we could actually do as well is invoke the council. Because we now have a chancellor, we can actually invoke it. And he'll give me a mission. And he'll basically, if I complete it, I'll get bonuses. And I'll make him like me more as well. So let's invoke the council. See what he wants me to do. Um, overpopulation. He wants me to construct any building from the following chain administration. Um, so and he'll give me 10 satisfaction with him for 10 turns, which is good. And also a boost to industry and satisfaction for sentinels. So they're really good things to do. Um, and basically what that means is he wants me to upgrade these buildings via uh, this is the administration chain right here um, i can't afford it quite yet but i'll be sure to get on it as soon as i have the ability to well also you can downgrade settlements as well that's not that's kind of interesting we also gained a uh, a trait as well on cow song as well nice authority that's pretty good i mean he's not, not going to be any of them things but the extra bonuses are good because he's currently married to my daughter i believe who have they've actually just had a son so the same button twice yeah they've just had a son as well so that's fine cool welcome 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 um and then everyone else has got a new reform as well so that's actually um the funny thing is we can't even go down this or we can't go down this route or not oh we haven't finished building it yet so we can't but that's fine i wanted to grab this one anyway um because this also does give satisfaction for sent sentinels as well which is good but it also should give us access to the next swordsman unit which means if i take a look at replacing these guys um swap unit i should now be able to get these dudes who are a lot better okay so they're, they're better at range toughness they've got a bigger shield and they get access to shield wall as well which is good it's just the only thing different is they don't have the morale but it's because these guys are a higher level i would assume um, wait, are they the same? Yeah, they're, they're better, right? Does it just upgrade these? No, these are saber militia, whereas these are saber infantry. Yeah, so we probably do want to upgrade them, but I'll upgrade them once we've taken out these settlements. Because this is more farmland as well, so we desperately do want it. And I think if we take this province, we can then trade with Sunjin as well. So that is ideal, man. I, yeah, I really want to uh, to boost that. Okay, so whilst we're sieging out the city itself, it's only five turns left. And we're going to start taking attrition now. So I'll probably wait until our supplies are kind of running low before actually assaulting. Uh, but we do have uh, Yuan Shu leveling up to level 5 now, which is awesome. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stick... No, I don't want, don't want to stick Meditate. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab Meditate because it makes him unbreakable. Um, so he'll fight to the end. And he also gets a bit of morale when defending. Um, but mainly it just gets me towards this natural ally bonus because the extra morale for him being a commander is dope. So I want to try and get that next. And then we'll probably work further on down this line to get the arm piercing bonus. And also finally the, uh, the bonuses here so we can get the unyielding earth as well. Because that's a huge bonus to the infantry. Um, none of these will give him any bonuses. Yeah, it would boost his stats though. And boosting his stats isn't bad because, you know, the higher satisfaction we get for him being our character, um, being our faction leader is good. So does anything give him more authority? Yeah, we have a few that give him more authority. Let's just do that just to boost it because um, it might get further and further up that and maybe give an extra 10. 
unnecessary delays as well. Oh, that sucks. The construction of this city has been delayed. That kind of is unfortunate. Um, but I guess not the end of the world. Do we continue to boost our population growth from the city? Or would I rather something else? Would I rather just save my money for now? Um, yeah, screw it. Let's go ahead and get... Because the sooner we get this, the better, right? So let's actually boost up this to uh, labor conscription housing. Um, because the sooner we get that, the bigger the city grows and the more money we get from tax and also the, the quicker we replenish in this region. So it's always a good thing to have. Wow, he wants peace really badly. I mean, there is literally no escape. So he's probably going to sally out of the city now because the city is starting. No, he's not. He's going to stay in there. What a madman. Well, I'll probably wait one more turn and then initiate the assault if we can. Yeah, winter is destroying my supplies. So I literally only have one more turn. Um, but the city is kind of damaged. We've already built sapping places. I guess we'll try and build another city. We get another one in the turn as well. So the city walls will be just derelict and we can move in and hopefully secure it. And also the garrison is taking heavy attrition now as well because the supplies are running. He refuses to surrender. I mean, I gave him the offer, right? I gave him the offer. And luckily no one's coming to help him either. So that's a good bonus. Sunjin is finally heading back north because Cao Cao ripped through his territory. So um, hopefully he'll make it back in time. And his son is just behind him as well. So um, we will just, I mean, maybe we'll end up going to war with Cao Cao to defend Sunjin. I, I guess we will, right? Because me and him are coalition buddies. Okay, so we have to take the city right now. So let's move in for it and secure it. I mean, the balance of power, surprisingly, isn't that heavily in my favor. So let's just dive in and fight it. This will be a fun one because it's a city siege. We don't really have a ton of infantry to storm the walls, but the walls themselves should be in ruin because of our sapping. Um, and I'm hoping because of the siege escalation as well, the actual towers themselves will be uh, basically non-existent, allowing us just to walk into the city um, and take over. Yeah, as we fought, the city is basically in ruin. So we're just going to push forward with all our might and try and smash through these breaches that we've created. Created through sapping. They've obviously got spearmen defending the breaches and a lot of archers. But honestly, you know, without any towers, it shouldn't be too much. Also, the city is also on fire, so we're going to be using that to our advantage. Um, they do have a lot of archers on the walls, though, which is a little bit, you know, a little bit nerve wracking. But I'm sure we'll be able to break them off of the walls of our own archers, as we do have like six units. And we can also form loose formation, so that's probably a good idea, right? Let's form loose formation and just like go right there. Um, we'll pop off our missile block chance right here to uh, protect us from the missiles. Boom. So that should give us... Oh, it didn't affect this unit. That sucks. But let's just try and brute force our way through. Yeah, literally the one unit that didn't get the bonus is getting smashed by arrows. That, uh, that is unfortunate. That really is. Um, and the archers can move up. Archers go and focus these guys. And then you three go and focus down these guys. And then the halberds just break your way through. I just want to brute force my way into the settlement. We could also arguably just... Yeah, let's go ahead and climb up this wall as well and start stopping these archers from shooting us. That's perfect. Um, right now, though, these arrows are hurting my halberds. I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? And you guys get up there. And then you can stay up for to bonus. Uh, boost the enemy stats. And then more infantry coming up. Um, I mean, it says I'm going to win pretty heavily. So I guess we'll accept it. Where, where is he? He's half health. Yeah, sure. We'll accept it. We can always run away if, if worse comes to worse, right? Oh, the image come through. What the hell is the AI doing? They're just clumping up here. I mean, we'll take that, right? The arrows are clearing out the walls. I mean, it's pretty unaffected. As you can see, a lot of the arrows are missing. So we just need to get some infantry up on these walls, like, now. And then that'll be good. Oh, yeah. He's already so low. Uh, we should be fine at winning that. Halberd's coming in. Yeah, let's just pour through the city itself. You have a pretty big bonus as well, yeah. Because if they're so depleted, their armies are, are really ineffective. Um, we'll push up the rest of these guys as well, just to continue to hit the arrow archers. It's probably a waste trying to kill these guys, honestly. Because we're about to clear out the walls anyway. So let's just push up with iron arrows. And you guys can climb up the wall as well. Yeah, I mentioned start climbing up the wall now. You can see that there. They're already jumping over. Looking to hit them. The axemen should be uh, doing a good job there at breaking that. Um, we're about to win this duel, but we are kind of getting kind of low on the duel. Is he going to finish him off here? Can we see him, like, give him the left, right, good night? With his fancy sword play. Like, he's so much more... The other guy's just, like, swinging his weapon around. Getting flung. Can you finish him off, please? You're kind of getting low now. He's, he's like, literally one here. Come on. Just break him. There we go. Oh, a stab to the face. That was brutal. That was absolutely brutal. Nice. Good on you, my dude. Okay, they are committing more infantry to this fight now. 
And our Axemen are winning the defences. Yeah, let's just keep on pushing, man. I'm literally smashing them with everything I've got right now. And they are refusing to break in this central plaza. Like, I'm not sure if they're unbreakable. No, they're not. They're just literally normal infantrymen. It's not like they're the militia of virtue or anything. Um, finally, thank God we decided, as I said, that the, uh, the city fell. Because I had this place surrounded for a good couple minutes. And, yeah, you can see how clumped up they are as they try and retreat and get out of there. And my men just cut them down. Um, but nice. The city has been taken. Uh, Yon Shu won a duel as well, which is always nice. Granted, the opponent was slightly wounded before the engagement, but being able to take the city um, should just mean that it's easy pickings now to push forward and secure the rest of this commandery, which is going to be that farm. It should also give us more vision now and also allow us to start trading with Yuan, uh, with not Yuan Shu, that's me, uh, with Sun Jin as well. So let's just take the settlement as we do need to replenish our military supplies quickly. Um, which is good, so yeah, that'll start going up now. We have the city, and then we can now trade with him? No, we can't. But he does have both. Factions must have a trade route. Maybe it will fire next turn again. Yeah, maybe it's just firing next turn. That's fine. That's fine. There's nothing else we can do where we can't marry or anything. I'd love to marry maybe your daughter to my daughter or something. <laughs> no, 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 that came out wrong. I'd love to marry your daughter to one of my sons, maybe, because I think I have a son. And is he, he is coming back, right? Yeah, he's finally coming back to fight Sao Sao after being very busy in the south here. And the Han Empire is still pretty scary, like kind of a big indent into his empire as well. So he's going to need to do something about that. But maybe I'll go to war with the Han. I'm not too sure. I think He Yi is definitely next, though. We'll push up. We'll take He Yi. Obviously, taking this farmland as well is going to be pretty important. But yeah, we'll push up. We'll take this farmland. And then we'll fight He Yi, kill him. Because he has some iron mines and he has a city or something up here. And then a farmland. We could even sell this farmland to Sao Sao. And then we can push on. Why are we losing a lot of food? Why are we losing so much food all of a sudden? Oh, because it's a level 6 city. Is that why? This gives me a bunch of food production, which is good. And this gives me food. Okay, so it should be fine. As soon as these are all built, I think it'll be okay. It's just we're not getting any of these bonuses right now. So we're losing a lot of territory. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's going to be fine. We also have another reform as well, so we'll stick that bad boy in. Uh, what do we want? So, yeah, we want to pick up the next Halberd unit. So, yeah, unit-wise, we're looking really good. Like, we're going to be able to... Definitely, let's do that. Um, so, now we can have the better Halberds, and we can recruit the better... Do we not get access to them? Oh, we don't get access to them for whatever reason. Maybe... Do, do you get access to them? Let's have a look. No, you don't get access to the better halberds either, so do we just not have them? All of a sudden, or do we need the building out of interest? No, that's just reforms. So then how do we get the halberds then? We, I obviously managed to recruit them previously. Maybe I have to wait a turn. I can't just get them immediately, but that wasn't the case with the other ones. Um, anyway, let's just end the turn, see what happens. And then I guess push on the farmland fairly quickly because I want I don't want him to give him any chance to be able to recruit more men or anything. Nice. So we completed our council's mission. So we got a big boost to our industry. I think 10%. Yeah, to our industry, which as you can see is really helping out. We're actually making a ton of cash right now. Uh, I'm sure we can see specifically what it is. What do we make the most from? Uh, commandries. Yeah, we're making a thousand gold from industry right now, which is actually a surprisingly large amount. Um, our tax collector got attacked. That's not too good. Um, also, I think the reason we can't recruit the spearmen anymore is because maybe we can only recruit one of the green guys now under champions. It makes sense. Um, also, that's kind of good. I mean, it gives them more authority, which is nice. Does that boost up here? So now we're getting 10 satisfaction for everyone, which is just going to make our, you know, our people relatively happy. This guy is not very happy, though. Maybe I'll have to promote him then. Or I can maybe, is there an 8? No, there isn't an 8 either. That's unfortunate, but we'll have to make a few of these guys happy. Yeah, Lady Feng is not happy either. So let's just give her her this as well. Boost up to 17, but we'll, we'll probably end up promoting them because we have so much money right now, we can easily do that. Um, and now let's just move in and take this settlement as well. Should be fairly clean just to move in and secure this. And that's our farmland. That should sort out our food issues and also kill this faction as well. So... Securing this region has really helped us out. Yeah, look at our food production now. It's huge. And Hanfu has been killed. We can see the entirety of the yellow turbans now. And can we also trade with Sinjin? Is it going to tell me? Yeah, trade agreement, Sinjin. No, Han Empire I can trade with. Interesting. I mean, how much do you give me? 500 gold a turn for that? So it pays for itself in like four turns? I mean, yeah. 
I also really want to trade bow with Sinjin. That'd be awesome. But I guess for now, sure. For now, that's 500 gold. We can also pick... Oh, we actually have another trade partner as well. So we can trade with both Sinjin and the Han. But I mean, that's we're making two grand a turn now. That's crazy. That is a lot of money to be chilling on. So we can really start to develop our own provinces now. We actually have a spare, a spare slot right here as well. Which I'm not really too sure what I want here, if I'm honest. We already have a military building. Some, I guess more industry if we have it. So private workshops. That just boosts income from industry. Yeah, that does boost income from industry. So I guess that, because that will both help this one and also our state workshop. So let's grab that in the extra slot. So we are a money-making machine right now, especially if we get to the next legitimacy level. That gives us, if I can hover over it, uh, yeah, we're getting actually 10% income from everything. So we really want to work towards that. Free cities, all looking good. We have another slot right here as well. Um, I guess we could do grain storage. Honestly, not a bad idea, as we already have all the green stuff here. Or we could look for maybe a military encampment, like a conscription area. To help with public order. Blacksmith would help as well. Cheaper recruitment units. Like, are we going to be recruiting men here? There's a good chance, honestly. It's not like an awful chance we won't be. Military infrastructure. Just get a garrison here. Helps public order. Supplies. City is a level 6 as well, so there's quite a lot. Or do we get this? Reduce our legitimacy. Because how much are we getting every turn? We're getting we're only getting two every turn. So it's not like we're getting a lot, if I'm honest. So building that's probably not a good idea. Maybe just a labor camp, again, to boost population. And we can always filter this out later on. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Let's get a labor camp there. And the turn once more. We are making some serious money. So now I definitely want to spend some legitimacy on building another army. Because I think to kill He Yi, we're going to need at least two armies. Like, at least two armies. We also obviously need to... Bide our time over here as well. Um, let's also promote them characters. Oh, we can get a, yeah, administration. So who's unhappy? You are. are you just, you're just nobody though, right? You're kind of unhappy with me and you're an actual general. Whereas you're just no one. Lady Feng. You're my wife. Are you my wife? You are. Yeah, you're my wife. You should just be content. I am taking this all for us. Sun Yang as well. I swear he reminds me of someone. He's just a wanderer though. Yeah, and some lookouts. So no one too special here. Okay, he has some good armor, though. Um, so maybe we'll end up recruiting him in our other army. Can we do, then we can recruit better spears. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's stick um, Kumanji wise Let's, send, let's let our, our wife take this up. Because it would kind of suck if our wife, um, our wife broke away from us and joined someone else. And we'll stick her. What's making the most money? Industry and commerce industry. So let's think her in our other province, in Lu Biao's old province. Because what I want to do with her now is I want to give her this guy. Yeah, that's the best, right? Yeah, I want to give her this guy because he boosts income from industry, which should obviously give us an extra like a hundred or like eighty gold a turn, which is a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it adds up. It really does. Um, so that's that. That's going on. You're replenishing everything, which is fine. Um, I should probably take this time to change this Saber Militia out for the actual... I mean, should we just get a Sword Guard? The Sword Guard is really good. We could also get the Rapid Tiger Infantry as well. Yeah, maybe we'll just switch out all these Militia for the uh, Sword Guard. And maybe this unit of Axemen. That's a lot of our money, but I think it'll be fine. Just like, this will be just like an unbreakable defense. And then you can be an Axe, probably. Yeah, so then we still have... We can't even recruit axes anymore. Okay, well, you can just be that uh, better sword. And I guess you can be a better sword as well. We just won't go with axes. That's fine. We don't have, enough, we don't have the money to right now, but that's all good. Um, and then with you, we have no followers to give you. But I can just promote you straight up because we have the money. So let's... Oh, we can't promote him. Oh, we don't have any money now. We'll promote him next turn. And get him up and running. So yeah, the uh, the kingdom is looking good. If we take a look at ownership, you can see we have a decent amount of territory. We'll go ahead and go to war with Hee next. And that'll put us bordering with Sao Sao. As you can see, Sao Sao is ripping through Sinjin. But Sinjin has now arrived. And he's going to probably start doing some big ish, like some big assaults against Cal Sao Sao. I mean, ideally, I would love for them to make peace and then bring Sao Sao into the fold of our coalition. That would be ideal. We also need to start discovering people as well. Because we really have not discovered anyone. Wait, Sinjin, he is part of my coalition still, right? Negotiate... Coalition to defend barbarians. It's such a lame coalition, it really is. Um, we could also maybe try and get like Kong Rong in or something. 
No, he doesn't want to join. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, we're actually at peace as well. We're, we're literally not at war with anyone, which is perfect. So that's why I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode, guys. If you enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think we should do right now, because at the moment, the world is our oyster. We have no one, like, attacking us. We have no one um, threatening threatening us, basically. We are just safe. We've got non-aggression with Dong Ming. Do we march on Dong Ming and fight the Han? Or do we look to try and kill the Yellow Turbans and then maybe march on the capital a little bit later? Um, definitely, 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 we're going to recruit another general here. Probably a green guy so we can get the next good halberds in our army. Yeah, we'll probably get Song Yang into our force for sure. Um, oh, yeah, also we need to dispatch a spy as well. We can actually do that this turn. But yeah, it's a lot of legitimacy to give up. 50 legitimacy is half a bar. It's li literally half a bar. So I guess I don't want to do that quite yet. But we definitely do want to embed a spy. And I also want to find my brother as well. Because when we find our brother, we could maybe spy on him. But for now, things are looking up pretty good. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. And I'll see you in the next one.